evening, y'all. I didn't know if we'd have more or less. I know a few people. I'm still going to get used to this. That, that bugs me. Anyway, <laughs> um, I didn't know. But so we've got a good group tonight, so that's good. I know it's getting darker. You know, it gets dark earlier now, too, so that's kind of a, 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 a turn off for some people to have to drive it. They don't want to drive at night, and I don't blame them. Um, but we, we do have it recorded. So hopefully, if anybody watched it last week, I know you, we, we were getting used to some things, so yeah, you couldn't hear everything, so hopefully we'll work out some of that as we go. Okay, so um, before we start, just, um, we are going to try to start right at 6.30, <laughs> even though we're a little late tonight, but we will still try to stop at 7.30, so we are, we're definitely going to, we're going to try to keep it to that. Um, I know we're going to take spring break week off, that's not coming up till March, um, I believe it's the week of the 9th. I should have written it down. I just wrote spring break, but we'll, I think it's, yeah, we'll, I'll let, we'll, I'll make sure I mention it, you know, the week or two before. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then it'll be in the newsletter. If, if you, if y'all get the, the email newsletter, um, it should be, we should have it in that because we'll be on the calendar. And um, if, uh, if you do, if y'all have, if anybody uses Google Calendar, you can, if you know how to do that, you can can add the <laughs> the pecan calendar to your Google Calendar if you know how to do that. But anyway, all the it is all online too if you if you want to look at it. But anyway, yeah, we'll change it on that. Um, okay, and you've got, everybody got the handouts for tonight. These are a few. I'm not going to necessarily go in the order they're stapled. <laughs> Sorry, but um, and there's also one that um, I printed an extra that we're not going to get to tonight. That but anyway, when we get there, I'll mention which ones. Some of them are just more kind of reference well all of them really are just more reference but um okay well let's start with prayer father we thank you so much for bringing us here tonight god we um we know that you have the ones here that are to be here and we ask that you would um keep your hand on the ones that couldn't be here for all the different reasons we know there are so many and so different things many things going on and the ones that are at home that are planning on um watching the video or or um you know, studying on their own, God, I just pray that you would just, um, all of us, just open our eyes to your truth and give us your wisdom as we uh, open your word and as we study your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so last week, we'll kind of do a recap. Did anybody do any of the practice stuff? I'm not going to check. Well, I guess I shouldn't ask if anybody did. <laughs> um, anyway, okay, so we talked about it being one big story. Is this too loud or it feels... Is it loud? Okay, all right. We talked about it being one big story. So it's one story, ultimately one author, right? There were it's like 40 about different, you know, human authors. But one story, one author, and one savior. So we talked about how it's a bunch of small stories that comprise one big story. So that there are, um, we talked about the, um, it's all divinely inspired, right? So that's the, the one author. And that it was meant to be read aloud, or a lot of, at least a lot of, we know that a lot of, um, during the Greek and Roman times, um, a lot of things were virtually, all literature was read aloud during that time. So that really kind of puts a different spin, especially when we think about the poetry books. Um, and we talked a, a little bit, I think, last week about the different, no, we didn't talk about the different genres. We talked about story structure. That's right. So we are going to talk some about different literary styles. We're not going to get too much into that tonight, but we are going to talk about some different, the different literary styles, like poetry and the wisdom books and different things like that in the, um, in the Bible as we go. But we're, right now we were talking about story, or last week we talked about story and how stories connect. And what were some of the favorite books that y'all came up with? Somebody said Little Women, Gone with the Wind, yeah. So those are examples of stories that connected with us. And we think about we told stories to our kids when they were little, or we read stories to them, and, uh, you know, why, why would we read a story to our kids instead of just telling them? This is what I want you to learn out of this, you know, <laughs> because the stories connect. The stories connect better with our, um, with the way that we're wired, the way God designed us. But then we talked about um, the Dean Kuntz's story structure, the plunger character into terrible trouble as soon as possible, <laughs> and how the Bible does that right off the bat, and then eventually it goes on to you feel like everything's hopeless, and then the, the hero conquers against all odds, and um, and we talked about some we talked about setting and characters. What else did we talk about as far as different elements of story? Do you all remember conflict? Anta yes, an antagonist and our protagonist. Yep, the resolution at the end, the 
the kind of rising elements, rising to the climax of the story. And, the, and it's just, I, I just think it's really interesting to think of the, the Bible in this way. Um, that really, it's a large part of the Bible story that leaves us longing for things to be fixed, I guess would be the best way to describe it. That we, right off the bat, we fall into trouble and we go through the majority you know, of the story just really building up to that we want things to be fixed and put back the way they are, they were. And, and we looked at, um, if you did any of the practice this week, we looked at the first three chapters of Genesis. And um, the, so okay, so it starts off with in the beginning. So this, if you think about stories and they all have beginnings, right? If you've ever, if you ever started a TV series about three series, three episodes into the series and you're <laughs> feeling like you're constantly trying to get caught up <laughs> or a movie, you come in late or you go out to get popcorn and come back and you miss something. Well, the beginning is always very important. It usually it sets the setting usually. We introduce characters. The beginning is, is a very important part. So Genesis, the first three chapters, well, all the Bible is very important, but the first three chapters pretty much set the stage for the, the setting. The earth was created. Um, you know, God, God created people, God created everything that the whole story revolves around. Um, okay, so in the beginning, uh, the word beginning uh, also means, in Hebrew, means the choicest part. So, you know, if we think about our, um, our, firsts, our first fruits to be given to God, and we think of that as the, as the beginnings also, the first of everything, um, that and it also has at its core, the word beginning also had, not necessarily the Hebrew word, but just in our thought, the word has time at its core, right? If we think about beginning, you know, and everything's in sequence, you know, there's a beginning, there's an ending, there's everything in between. And as humans, we cannot view, it, it's hard for us to view anything outside of the perspective of time, I guess. We, we think of almost everything as a, with a beginning and an end. But we also know from the Bible that God is eternal, right? He has no beginning and end. And that just, our human brains are not wired to completely understand that. <laughs> but, but that is, we do know that. We know that from Scripture. And um, so he is outside the constraints of time. And this is just one thing that I find interesting that I've thought a good bit about. I think of it like, because I've spent time trying to put this all together in my head, and it, it just does, I can't, my brain can't capture this. But, <laughs> um, but I think of like eternity, Okay, this vast space, although even that has limits in our minds, you know, it's hard to, we can't really understand that. But I think of like God had to create time, right, before he even created everything else. It's some, in some way, he had to create time because time, he is outside of time. So I think of it like, I'm a visual person, so I think of it like this little time bubble created within this vastness of eternity. And you've got this little time bubble that then within that little time bubble is the earth and humans and all the, all the stuff that he created. And that, that God is outside of time, so he can see everything from a whole different perspective, you know, than we can. Um, you know, he can see, he sees the beginning and the end all at the same time, right? And he knows to him time what's, it's, I mean, it's already happened. You know, he sees everything as, as one thing. And, um, and so humans then were created in the midst of that little time bubble, and that's how we view everything is with time. But when we really think of... Um, of God being outside of time, it just, to me, it just really opens up our mind to think, wow, you know, this vast, we think of the universe as huge, and, but that's just, that's within. The universe is still within this little time bubble, <laughs> within this vastness of eternity, and we just, we can't grasp it. But our God is just so amazing. It just shows you how big our God is. And then I, when I start thinking of that, my problems start shrinking, <laughs> you know, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, um, because I think, oh, my goodness, if God can manage all that you know of course he can take care of my little problem or whatever it is it just it just seems the whole big picture of things it really it helps me to see things in perspective um okay so humankind then we were created this is still back to genesis 1 through 3 so we were created in god's image right we are an image bearer then what what do y'all think of when you think of an image bearer what would an image bearer do thoughts huh reflect Re yeah we're a reflection of our creator yeah because we were made in his image yes yeah um okay so where do we see image let me back up a little bit i guess we see images where, where would we think of an image an image bearer what would we think of i think of like a coin um 
you know, that there's an image of, you know, a ruler on a coin. Um, what? A picture? Yeah, like a portrait. Yeah, exactly. So those there, that is really just a representative of, of a representation of the the true image. Is that? Yeah. So we are. I think of it. So I, what I was getting at was I was thinking of it like we are representatives. We are God's representatives on this earth, and we are. He's also given us chores to do. Right. He gave us some things to do to take care of what we are are a part of our creation. Um, so that, okay, so Genesis 1, God tells humans to do, he gives the four tasks. And in 128, up here, I've just got them written down. In 128, he blessed them and he told them to do what? Does anybody remember or want to, what did he tell them to, one of the first things he told humans to do? Be fruitful and multiply. And here we went again Sunday with Steve going into that. And I was like, man, every week <laughs> you've got. Um, but, yeah, so it's, kind of, it's really kind of cool because God knows. He knows what, what we're going to what we're gonna do. Um, so, yeah, be fruitful and multiply, which Steve got into a little bit Sunday, that that's one of the, the tasks that, that our creator assigned to his creation, um, that we were to be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. Um, what was the next thing? Or what's one of the next things? Mm-hmm. Yeah, to rule over creation, the rest of creation, so the, yeah, the animals, the, the fish, the birds, all the animals, and to subdue the earth, right? So we, we are set a little bit above, you know, if you think of it that way, the animals, and that he, he gave some order to his creation. Um, and then he also, he sets man in the Garden of Eden and tells him to do what? Yeah, yeah, he tells him to tend it. That's where I was going with it. Yeah, he tells him to work the garden, to care for it. So we are, we are his image bearers, and we are to care for his creation. That's another that we do. And then he, there's one other thing, one other thing mainly that we fail at, but he tells us to not eat from a certain tree. He gives us, a, he gives us our first law, all right? So... Yeah, he, we, obedience is the next task he gives us that he tells us, to, what, kind of telling us what not to do. Yeah, I'm trying to repeat things for the video. <laughs> yes, kind of telling us what not to do. Yeah, but that is we are, we are to obey. We all have to have boundaries. I mean, have you ever seen, you know, your kids when they're little, they test the boundaries. I mean, before they're old enough to speak, you know, they know they're testing the boundaries. But we need boundaries. We all, we know we may not, may not want the boundaries sometimes, but we know we need boundaries. So God did the same thing with us. He gave us boundaries. Um, okay, and that was another thing that I think is interesting in, um, in 2.16 that from what I could find, um, that was the first mention where God gives a command. And I looked up, you know, I thought, okay, the, the, first, the first chapter where he's creating the earth, he's saying, it says, God said, so he, by his breath, by his word, you know, by the word, we know, and now on, the, on this side of the cross, we know by his word, that, which is Jesus, that everything was created. But there's, it's a different word that's used in 2.16. Let me get there. I should have marked that better. Genesis 2.16, where he says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge and good and evil you shall not eat. Uh, so he commanded him, and that word command is different than the word said, because I started thinking, how are those different, or what's the difference? But it is different. So to me, that's a, the, the first place that something is mentioned in the Bible, a lot of times is, is pretty significant and tells you a little bit about, about that, and I thought that was interesting, that their first law, we had one thing, we had one job, right? We had one law that we had to command, I mean, that we had to obey, and we still couldn't do it. Um, and, um, oh, yes, uh-huh. You want a microphone? I'm gonna grab the. Are you? Oh God. A warning. Okay. What? What? What, what translation is it? Do you, new Living. I like New Living too. Yeah. A warning. That's a good. That's a good way to think of it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it does. He's try he cares enough to warn us to not do something.
Yeah, 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 yeah. And really that shows us God's merciful, gracious side, that he's, he's love. Right, right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I think how we view that, we can see his loving nature in his discipline, in his commands, you know, rather than so many times it's so much easier to see all the do's and don'ts, you know, and the or the don'ts and the don'ts and the don'ts. <laughs> huh? Yeah, no guesswork. Right, yeah, he does. He leaves it pretty, he's pretty clear. Right, right. Yeah, 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 it was, yeah, yeah, I like that. Oh, right, when he gave the command, yes, yes. Yeah, that Eve had not been formed at the point when he gave the command, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, 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 right, yeah, yeah. But ultimately, I guess it was it was Adam's responsibility then to pass that on. And how much does that mirror our responsibility to pass on to our children, to the next generation, whether it's our, you know, whether it's actually children, you know, that we have in our, as a family, or whether it's spiritual children, you know, that, that we have a responsibility to pass on what we know, what we have learned. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, that is, that is interesting. Could y'all hear her that, um, I know that, okay. I knew we had some people, no, it's okay. I knew we had, at last, it, it, sometimes it does kind of get hard to hear and hear. I know we're kind of spread out for social distancing a little bit too, so it makes it hard. But yeah, that, that um, she, but the first thing she was saying is that there was nothing, that she was reading a commentary that said there was nothing probably inherently wrong, like with the fruit. It was the act of disobedience, you know, that was the, that was the, um, the kicker <laughs> that got him. Yeah. And, then that also, then that in turn, we keep reading on in, in Genesis 3, we see where, where um, God tells Adam, cursed is the ground because of you. And so we see that, that, that sin is, is creation-wide. It's not just human. It's not just mankind. You know, it's not just the serpent. It's, it's creation-wide. I mean, we see that, you know, that, that you know, the, the effects of it, on our imperfect world now, you know, we can see the result of that too. And I think that's one thing that so many people get, if they don't understand, if you don't understand the beginning of the story and you don't understand the reasons why things happen, you can get very turned off against, well, why is God letting all this evil, you know, all this stuff happen? And, and it's really, it's natural consequences of our own sin, our own disobedience. Is It's just been, it's a long time coming. It was immediate. Like Jody just said, you just, they didn't die immediately, right? They so they think, oh, I can get away with this. And how many times have we done that in our life? <laughs> you know, I know I have. You know, I'll get away with something a little bit. Oh, I can, you know, I ate this and didn't gain weight today. <laughs> so, you know, a week later, maybe not, you know, maybe two weeks. <laughs> but how many times do we do that? Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's not all about me. It's what, Yeah. Yeah, that it is. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yes, it was. And then he goes on to protect them by, by keeping them from eating of the tree of life so that they're not stuck then in that, that sin eternity, you know, that, that then we have an option where he, and he knew, he knew this from the beginning, from before the beginning, right, that, that he was going to have the plan to where, he could redeem us, and so yeah, so even kicking kicking Adam and Eve out of the garden and protecting them with the the flaming sword seraphim. Anyway, whatever it was, I did that last week. Cherubim was it cherubim and a sword? Okay, yeah, um, and yeah, even that was just merciful. It wasn't a um, 
it wasn't a I'm going to banish you because I'm mad at you and I just want to get revenge or, you know, <laughs> it, was, it was a protection. Okay, so did anybody else have anything that you wanted to share from the first three chapters of Genesis um, that we talked about a little bit, looked at a little bit this week? Oh, Judy, can you can y'all use the microphone? I'm sorry. Just, <laughs> just so that the... One of the things that I hadn't really thought about that you talked about last week and I was paying attention to in this reading was the mood and the tone that was set by the, the yeah. words. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that, so what did y'all think of that? What did you see? Could you feel more or pay more attention to how you felt as you're, as you're reading? Or even other scripture if you didn't, you know, if you're, if you're reading something else. The first I noticed it was at the very beginning when they were talking about um, the world that God was creating. And it just, the way they said it, it looked like it was very foreboding at first. Yeah. Kind of dark and gray and yeah. mist, and yeah. that definitely set a mood. Uh, I think of like a mood, like if you're putting it into a movie setting, you know, and kind yeah. of picture in my mind how that would, how that would feel, and that God, being light, then mm -hmm. comes in and and makes order out of everything. Yeah. Did you have? Well, she was just talking about the mood at the beginning and just, but yes, what, yeah, but let's go into that. Yeah, the, the difference between the end of, let's see, what were the, I don't have a copy of that here. Yeah, the end of, yeah, the mood changes there. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I've got four of them scattered around, microphone. Okay. Oh, just hit the, yeah, tap the mute button at the top. The button that's lit, lit at the top. If it's, if it's not okay. lit. Okay, is that it? Okay. I was just, I just simplified it as best that, in words that I could understand and hope this is, was the gist of the question. And I just went God's disappointment to God's disapproval to God's plan for mankind. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Because the plan is kind of the, the, well, we're not there yet with the resolution, but it gives us hope. You know, it's that turning point in, within those few chapters of we have hope. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Anybody else? Anything? Okay. Well, we are going to move on a little bit to, we're going to talk a little bit. We're still keeping this idea of story. Like I said, we're going to talk a little bit more about literary styles, not today, but... Um, in the future, and but we're going to get a little more into um, kind of the history and kind of the structure of the Bible itself and how the books are laid out and some things like that. So just to kind of understand that, um, some things I've read kind of start with that. But to me, I just love the story, and it's kind of it's kind of like the whole story in itself. You have to know why, you know, why do you want to study why the books are laid out the way they are <laughs> until you know that there there's something that you that you want to get out of that you know that there's a story you want to get you want to get out of. okay so we talked about the authors a little bit right did you know that there were in in the things I was reading I noticed that there it said all the books were written by Jews except for one author and if you look through look at this one oh yeah um, Betty you got the authors one if you oh okay at the top of the at the top of the screen, I think there's, hang on, I'm sorry. Is it not showing up? I think right up here, there's some little red, uh, no, over here, there's some little red buttons. This is audience and stage. Click the red, it should turn green. Did it go? The one that says audience, click it. Okay, click back on the. Why is it not? It was on a while ago. I think we don't have that many. Okay. Anyway, there's these that give you the authors. Um, 
Hopefully we'll get that up there in a minute. Sorry. Always something in there. Okay. So these we see this is just kind of a reference, but it gives us the authors that traditionally we think um, or some that we don't know that were um, that have written every book. So generally they were all Jewish except for one is traditionally thought of as not being who anybody have any thoughts on that? Who they think it might be? Mm-hmm. Sorry. <laughs> that was loud. Yeah. Yeah, Luke and Acts. And that Luke was the only one that was not a Jewish um and a Jewish author. I just thought that was interesting. Um Okay. So it, do what? That's not really showing up good. Okay. Well anyway, you got your you got this, so <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um Okay, ultimately, though, it's given by one author, right, for one purpose, and everything points to um, Jesus. That's really what we're, you know, we're saying, that there is divinely um, inspired. Um, and let's see, I think I kind of went out of order here, so this was, wasn't making, my notes weren't making sense. Um, okay, the Bible is ultimately one book given by one author for one purpose. To And I love this scripture. It was by... Um, I don't have the whole thing written out, Emerson, in a book um, called, I think it was The Story of Scripture. And he says, um, Scripture is given by the Father to reveal the Son by the power of the Spirit. And in this way, it's um, Trinitarian. So he, he, he gets into in this book about how, you know, obviously we know that Jesus was there from the beginning, right? Um, in the beginning, and even in, in John, it says, right, you know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So we know that Jesus was there. So the whole... The whole Bible points to Jesus being the ultimate fulfillment of this promise that we are wanting to get everything fixed. Um, okay, um, so we've got two. So we have two questions that we really look at when we're looking at this Bible study. We're looking at the whole story, and we're looking at how it all points to Jesus, right? Okay. Um, so back to okay. So back to our authors. We have this is like I said, just more of a reference, but you can see how many different books each one wrote and I thought this was you know, I really hadn't studied this a lot until I started studying doing this study so it was interesting to me to see you know how many books Paul wrote and I was looking one time that I was reading a book um, one time that uh, I can't remember who it was but she said when she she was not a Christian it was the, the author that was writing it said she was not a Christian until she met her husband and then she became a Christian and she said he he was really encouraging me to read the Bible and she said I kept telling him I kept looking for that book of Paul she said, you talk all this time about, you're always quoting things that Paul said. And I thought, there's got to be a book called Paul. <laughs> so, I always think of that, that I think, yeah, he wrote all those books. Okay, so the, 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 um, the next handout we've got, this Books of the Bible, is one that, um, I don't know if y'all, uh, Dallas Theological Center has, um, or Dallas Theological Seminary has some free courses online, by the way, and there's at the bottom of this, there is the website to this one. But if you go to this courses.dts.edu, you can find other courses, and they're really good. They're video, and there's, there's um, you know, a lot of text and questions and different things are really good. And there's one called The Story of Scripture that Mark, uh, Dr. Mark Yarbrough, who I think is now the, he's now the president of DTS because, the, anyway, but he's a really good teacher, really good teacher. And um, anyway, he gives this, this, this thing in this, in this class, the story of scripture, where he gets his kids to clap out this rhythm of these book numbers, the, the 512, 5512, and 4, 1, 21, 1. And he goes through this whole thing, and it really is catchy. It sticks in your head. <laughs> so I'm not going to go through that. But if you want to look at that video, it's really, but that makes me think of that every time I see this. But that is an easy way to remember kind of some groupings of, of the Bible and how they're grouped. Um, so the first five books of the Old Testament is the Pentateuch or the books of Moses. And we're going to get a little bit, not tonight, but we're going to get a little bit into the history of the Hebrew Bible versus the Christian Bible, if you want to call it that, or the Protestant Bible. And it's the same content. It's the same thing. It's just the way the books are ordered differently in the, the Hebrew Bible, or generally ordered differently. And um, we'll, get, we'll get a little bit into that. But that's, so that's the first five books of Moses. Um, then there's 12 books of history, five books of poetry, five major prophets and five minor prophets. Do you know the difference between the major and the minor prophets? What makes some major and what makes some minor? Anyway, 
I didn't. I looked. <laughs> It's the length of the it's the length of the books. Yeah, I thought it was going to be some big spiritual, you know, or something. I don't know something, but it, it's the length of the books is the way they organize them. The shorter books, it's not that they were less or more important at the time or anything. It was just the the size of the books. So the major prophets, so the bigger books, and then the smaller books, and then the New Testament is four four one twenty one one. So it's four gospels. One book of history, which is Acts, 21 letters, which you can look back at your authors and see how many of those Paul wrote. <laughs> yeah, a lot of those were Paul. And um, then one book of prophecy, Revelation. So I, I just love the way that, I don't know, I'm, an, I'm a visual person. I'm, I like order, I like structure. <laughs> and it just, it helps me see the big picture if I kind of know. Once, I, once we start reading more stories or look at, when you look at different stories, you can fit them in to where they belong and this also will go, we'll go a little bit into literary styles when we look at this because like the, the books of poetry, that's a whole different literary style than if you're reading, you know, Genesis. Um, Genesis is more of a story. Um, one thing I was reading was saying that, um, that the poetry, you can almost take like a story, a lot of places you can have a story that's retold in a poetry format like, like in the Psalms. You know, you can have a story that Something that story that happened with David, and then there's a, there will be a corresponding psalm that he's writing, you know, about that, and it sort of retells the story, but in a different, um, we get a different feeling from it, a different experience from it, instead of just, you know, laying out the story or laying out the facts. So, anyway, sorry, we'll get into that later. But okay, so that's just a reference, just one of those things that I thought it might, um, you might enjoy seeing how those go together. It helps me. Okay, so titles. And you can see this from the authors because there are the titles here on the side too. Um, there are no, from everything I've read, there are no like sacred titles. <laughs> that this was, uh, in other words, God didn't necessarily give the title of the book. And, and um, I don't think always all the, um, the, the verse separations, you know, were there to begin with. Um, but uh, we did know that it was from God. So one thing I read was, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and this was a, an article on blueletterbible.org. If y'all, if any of y'all ever look at blueletterbible.org online, it's a really good resource website. You can read the Bible on there also, but it's also got a lot of, um, what am I thinking? Not just commentaries, but a lot of study, study sources. Um, okay, one thing that originally the Bible did not have a title written at the beginning of the work. However, there were probably some notation made on the outside of the scroll to indicate either who wrote it or what the writing was about. So that was interesting. Um, the title of the first five books of Hebrew scripture or called the books of Moses differ in the English titles. And like I said, we'll go a little bit into the Hebrew and the English, but here are some examples. In Hebrew, Genesis, a lot of times they were the first um, few words in the text. So um, Genesis in Hebrew, a lot of times was called in the beginning. Genesis is a little shorter. <laughs> a little easier. Um, Exodus was titled, These Are the Names. Leviticus was, And He Called. Now, that's a tough title because it gives you <laughs> not, not a lot of information about what is in there. Numbers is In the Wilderness. And Deuteronomy, These Are the Words. So just some examples of what um, some of the titles may have been written on the, on the scrolls. Um, but there, there are also in the order of the books. I mentioned that the Hebrew... Bible, which is the Hebrew, which is the Old Testament, right, um, is sometimes a little bit different order. Um, but we see a lot of um, titles based on uh, main character. In our Bible, our as in the English or Christian, Protestant, those are all the same descriptive words for that. Um, our order a lot of times is logical order. We see that in the, the books of the Bible in this, you know, this handout. Um, it's kind of a logical order, how things go together. We can kind of group them. Um, so, so titles sometimes are based on main character, like Ruth and Esther. Um, those were books about that character. Um, then also by author who wrote them, like who else? Ezekiel. Who who would be? We see a lot of them that right that have the author's name the same as the book name. Um, Amos and some of the the minor prophets, most of the minor prophets. Um, and then also people they were addressed to, which gets confusing to, to me when I first started really reading and digging into the Bible. You know, you're thinking, is Timothy written by Timothy? No. 
Yeah, and, and that, that can be confusing. So that was who that was addressed. It was addressed to Timothy. Um, Thessalonians was addressed to the people at Thessalonica. Um, the same with Colossians and, and, um, and those. So a lot of times it was people who it was addressed to. And then the literary form, we talked about that, Psalms, um, where there were songs, uh, Proverbs as wise sayings. Um, this was one thing I read on Blue Letter Bible. It said, the book of Revelation is somewhat unique. And the manuscripts that contain the book of Revelation have a number of different titles. They include the Revelation of John, the Revelation of John the Evangelist, and the Reg- Revelation of John the Divine. Um, but then this, uh, whoever was writing this, his commentary I really liked, said, however, the first verse tells us that this tells us that this writing is the revelation of Jesus Christ, not the revelation of John. John merely wrote down what the Lord showed him. So we've got to remember this is always, always goes back to, to God, goes back to the divinely inspired. Um, okay, so we talk about order, Genesis, Revelation, pretty much standard order because we've got beginning and end. So those, it's, it's the, some other stuff that, that could be um, in different order, but it's always the same content. Um, okay, the order of the Gospels was based on, assumed on the order they were written, which I thought was interesting. I didn't think about that. Um, Paul's writings are generally based on size, kind of like the Minor Prophets, and the, as far as where they are located, the larger ones down to the smaller ones. Um, that in Latin manuscripts, um, they're said that they've found about 300 different arrangements of the book of scripture. So, I mean, the book of the Bible. Um, Paul's letters are arranged in at least 20 20 different sequences. So there's no really sacred order. But just, anyway, just throwing that out there. Um, Okay. Um, The other, another hand, well, the other handouts I've got are Bible timelines. Okay, there's this one that's the Bible timeline. And this, we're not going to get into a lot tonight. But just to note, it gives us a real, I really liked this. I've found these online. It's got down the bottom where I found it, so you could go, you could go find it. But I really like this timeline. Um, a lot of timelines get really cluttered because there's so much information. But this just pulls out a lot of the major things. So you can see it continues. I started to try to print it on like 11 by 17, but I thought, yeah, this is probably better. Um, so <laughs> I know. this, um, this, um, you can see where it connects here to here. So it, it, uh, it starts off with I'm confused, and I have always, I've learned, um, you know, different stories, but how do they fit together? Where, where, you know, where does this fit with that and why? Um, Let's see. There, okay, there's another one called the Simplified Timeline of Bible Events, this one. And there's three that kind of look similar to this. If you see those right there at the end, the last three pages. The Covenants and Temples, I didn't mean to print tonight. We're not going to get into that. <laughs> Sorry. Man, I don't know what I've got wrong with this setup. But... Okay. Um, but the Simplified Timeline, I like this one a lot. Because it it sort of puts the the spatial like the the different the 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 places you see the dominant nations north of the Holy Land and south of the Holy Land, and then you see where the Jewish people went during different times, and that was really that was really interesting to me because you can see, you know, where they go back down to Egypt, where they go, um, you know, up to the where the they go into exile with the Assyrian Empire. So, um, and these are just estimate um, times, obviously. But, um, but I, I really liked that. Um, and then the skip the covenants and temples one. Then the events. It's the same timeline, but with events overlaid on the top. And like I said, once again, there's reference of where I found these down there. And um, this one's a little more confusing. But it's just a different way to look at it. So to me, this one is very, is, these both are, are pretty much the same sort of thing. Just different ways to, wow. Well, huh? So, yeah, simple. I, yeah, you can get some, some of these get so detailed. But, um, and we'll, these are more for reference right now. We're going to get more into, um, into a little bit of the, the history of how things went. But, oh, did you have, Jeannie? Oh, oh, I thought you were. <laughs> 
Um, yeah. So, okay. So, like, if we're reading, um, do y'all ever the Bible, the Bible Project? Have y'all ever heard of that? There is a. It's called the Bible Project dot org. I think. Anyway, just if you Google Bible Project, all one word, it's a website that these people have made, and it's all like um, what do they call it? Crowdfunded. So it's by donations. So everything's free on it. And they've got a lot of videos and a lot of things. And there's one that I want to show next week that's that's really good that goes in. It's like they're like five minute videos too. They're short. And um, but they've got a lot of really good information. And one of the things that um, the one that I want to show next, planning on showing next week, gets into how um, if you're reading, like I think the example they use are Gideon. And if you're reading the story, how you might interpret it if it if you don't know the context that it's set in as far as the the time, what the you know, where the Israelites are at the time, you know, things like that, and how you can, how you can get different messages out of it um, that might be good things, but not necessarily what, you know, the author had intent, or you might miss something if you don't know the, the context. So anyway, we're going to look at that next week, too. So these are more just for reference right now, um, but we'll, as we'll go through, we'll, uh, we'll look at some more things. So that's all I've got for tonight. I wouldn't have as much. Um, did, I, did I miss a... Anything, Betty, on the, on the slides? Okay. All right. Well, and we don't have any practice homework for this week. So y'all just, I know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I got the timelines. But, yeah, yeah, look at these timelines. And I know they're kind of, it's just kind of a lot of information thrown out there. And we didn't do anything really specific with them. But it really, I just really love having everything fits in the box. And I know, that's not always how God is, right? And everything doesn't always fit all nice and neat. We have to trust him for things. But um, but to see the history of our Bible, to see the history of the, the people that are um, the main character, the main focus, the nation of Israel, and to see how they, and, and you know, how they, um, how their history goes through, how, they've, how they go throughout history and what happens to them and things like that. And we know the stories, but just putting them together kind of in a timeline really helps. So anyway, any other questions or anything? No? Okay. Well, let's pray and we'll be dismissed. God, we thank you once again for bringing us here. God, we thank you for um, your presence in our lives. We thank you that we have direct access to you, that we um, are able to just bring all of our um, questions and our uh, concerns and our praises and our thankfulness, our gratefulness that we can just bring everything to your feet. God, we just um, thank you. Thank you for giving us Jesus. We thank you that you've given us a way back to restoration and um, we ask that you would protect us all as we go on our ways and bring us back next week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>